And a very good evening, everyone. Welcome into your box seat. Brought to you in association with Woodlands, of course, standing sweet Lou, better's delight, and a whole lot more. Michael, we're at Addington Raceway Friday night, Oats night. It's always a special night, and Princess Tiffany got her first victory over Bella Montana. Very good evening to you. Evening, Greg. Big hi to everybody. Hope Wednesday was good, and hope you've enjoyed this the, the week where we've got a few questions still to be answered about these harness jewels. What's been good, Greg, is, is not many, if any, big names have pulled out. They've had a a lot of people going to harness racing New Zealand and saying, I won't be there, but there's not much wattage star power heading down. Um, I went to Addington on Friday night, as you know, and actually had a different experience. I went along there and didn't work, which was, was really nice. And I hadn't been in the Silks restaurant and, and seen how they do their hospitality for 15 years. It was really good. Uh, it's, it's gratifying that people can go to the races and it's an enjoyable experience even when it gets cold. Greg, it's great viewing. Um, Addington looked after us well. We were paying customers. We were there you know, to enjoy the races and it had a really good vibe to it. I think, I think it's the right home for the Southern Jewels now, having been on the other side of that experience. All right, we've got a lot to get through tonight, so let's have a look uh, what's ahead on your box seat. We've got Princess Tiffany, of course, winning the Oaks. Uh, no change, keeps winning by a nose. Uh, yes, we'll talk about the two-year-old feature from there. Mubien, that means Grand Chico, I'm told. So we'll be talking about him winning the sophomore. Sweden bound is Matthew Williamson. We'll have a chat to him as well. Uh, we've got a whole lot more stuff around the markets for the jewels. And of course, we've got some Australian features, including the Group 1 Australasian Trotters Championship. Let's get straight into it. It was the Breeders Fast Track New Zealand Oaks. And Princess Tiffany had made her way to the lead down the back and ended up doing this to them. In by two lengths, Kayla Marie, Bella Montana starting to run on now. Princess Tiffany leads. Kayla Marie and Bella Montana, 100 to go. Princess Tiffany, she's showing no signs of stopping. She's going to win it. And Princess Tiffany wins the Oaks from Kayla Marie, Bella Montana. Well, over $600,000 in the bank now. They don't get much cooler than this way, horse, do they? No, look, she's a great little horse. Um, you know, the more I think back on last week, you know, she might have just sort of went a bit hard early, um, cut a wind off a bit. But, you know, tonight she sort of showed what she's really capable of. The team at home, put everything back together for you tonight. What sort of run did you get in transit? Talk me through it. And I had a pretty good trip, really. You know, I was pretty happy with the draw. You know, you can just sort of make your own luck out wide early. You can just slot in and um, make the move when you've got to. Um, but, you know, I had a pretty good trip, really. Can't complain. Another great bunch of owners as well. Oh, most definitely. They'll just be absolutely thrilled to have had first and second, you know, to breed first and second in New Zealand Oaks is an amazing achievement. Horse and driver both full of confidence into the jewels. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, so a terrific performance from her. We know how dominant she was in the New South Wales Oaks, but she did get beaten last week, and this time she had to come off the second row. But as Natalie said then in her post-race comments, maybe she just went a bit hard last week, and being out of the early burn aided her chances this week. Yeah, and maybe she was a touch tied up, Greg. Um, the blood report last week suggested there's been a virus in the stable, and they're not thinking she was affected by that. But also goes to show at this level you don't need to underperform by many percentage points to get beaten. Um, I, I love the footage here, the footage down the back straight where Natalie is consistently looking around. We know what she was looking for. She was looking for Bella Montana. So I'm not going to be critical of Bella Montana this week or her the week before because Greg, they're both very good fillies and that's why the barrier draw for this race, which is noon on Friday, for the jewels is going to be crucial. I'm not entirely sure either of them can come around the other horse. The one thing I would say with Bella Montana is, I think we saw the other night that she's clearly better as a speed horse, and for that reason they did the right thing. Zach drove her right, not pressing forward from barrier five. Whereas I think Princess Tiffany is probably more versatile being worked on during a race because Natalie did have to stop, go, stop, go there a couple of times on her and she still was very strong to the line. Congratulations, uh, not only to the White Locks, but the Crichtons as well, breeding this horse, and obviously the White Locks uh, with Kayla Marie as well. Natalie's dead right. That is no mean feat being involved in the Cornella of a New Zealand Oaks. It's amazing how often it happens, isn't it? You can go years with having some success, and then all of a sudden when you have some, like the Charlie Roberts breed. Um, and you know, years ago, the Reeds back in the day with their horses, Christopher Vance and Mark Hannaf. It's amazing how often you can just get these clumps of horses. I'm not sure if it's a breeding thing. I'm not sure if it's just a statistical anomaly. But they've got 
two horses there of the only three who can win the duels because those three put about nine lengths on the rest of them and the same three were first, second and third the week before. I'm not sure Kayla Marie can win the duels, Greg, so I've got a funny... I think she can if she gets the right draw. Well, I think she would need the other two to have... Bad luck. ...harder runs yep. than she's going to have. And I think one of those two will win. Um, the market, which settled around $2 after that race, it's just going to be totally bound by what happens in that barrier draw. Princess Tiffany draws one to three, she might start at thirty. Yeah, well, if she rolls to the front as she did down the back uh, the last time, then she will be extremely hard to get past. But here's a, here's a key part of the race for mine. All right, she's following up on the back of Bubbled Up there, and we'll get to see here very shortly that she almost gets left three wide. Best Western's in the middle to her inside and directly behind her, Bella Montana. Now, Best Western kicks up here, and Zach just misses it by about a length. I wouldn't say misses it, but he then progresses and there's almost not enough room right there if he'd kept going Natalie wouldn't have got in she gets back into the running line and key point there Michael in front of Bella Montana and the reason she did that was because they were you know sort of jammed up, up and front. they were running at that stage they were and running hard I, I, to be honest I don't think it would have mattered too much I think eventually she would have got to where she was going to end up and control the race because once Zach got that far back in the field and there wasn't a nice helmet to follow he was in a bit of trouble, but it wasn't his fault. All the horses from barrier four inside him went out, and he just couldn't go out. So I, I think there's not a lot between them, but I do think that Princess Tiffany has more weapons to play with at the moment, and that's not being derogatory to Bella Montana. Bella Montana's two defeats this campaign, and both times she has... Not hit the wall, but she's been not as explosive at the end. Both oaks. Over the distances. So when you're extremely fast, and she's extremely fast, I think shorter distances suit you better because obviously that's your, your modus operandi. So I think the 1980 at the Jewel suits Bella Montana, and I'm not saying she won't stay, but she wasn't hitting the line as hard the other day as she does when she races in sprint races. Yep. And that's the reason I'm mentioning that, is because that's important heading towards the jewels. But I, I don't think you can bet into this market right now, Greg, because, as I said, everything's going to depend what marble they draw. Princess Tiffany, if she draws the second line, will still be probably sub 250, maybe 260 at the most. I think if Bella Montana drew the second line, she might get out to... Three fifty-four dollars. Michael, we're always asking for feedback on the show, so we got some uh, from Stuart Malleroy. Uh, he has put this to us. How are we going to explain the form reversal? Well, I thought Natalie did it, and we've done it as well. Um, he's suggesting there that Natalie went too hard. She said may have cut her wind off the week before, so she's already said that. Um, did she go too hard the week before? Well, she would have ended up three back on the fence and would have got pushed back to last when Chevron Supreme stopped in front of her. Um, I like this bit. I suspect you guys, especially Greg, pussyfoot around when it comes to the All-Stars team. Not really sure you've got too much um, analysis of that. Anyway, I don't pussyfoot around at all. I tell it how it is, and that's what we've said on this show for the last couple of years. We're going to tell the truth, and um, I think we pretty much do every time, whether it's the All-Stars or any other stable for that matter. I look at this way, Greg. Viewers, and we're lucky to have viewers, um, are allowed to have their opinions on what they make of the That's show. That's why we put it up. What they make of you or my waistcoat or whatever. <laughs> look, you can only give your honest opinions, and sometimes you get information which comes to you after the show on a Wednesday night or a Thursday or a Friday, and you change your mind. <laughs> Did she go too hard the week before? Look, when you're on the best filly in the country and you send them and you put them in a place where they can win the race. If someone runs past them, someone runs past them. You drive it pretty and, and you get beat, everybody abuses you for not putting it in the race. Look, I'm not gonna, it's like the vet story last week about the blood spinning. We've had a bit of feedback where people have said, well, you should have said this and you should have said that. I'm not a vet, you know, like. And I, we I, asked three. <laughs> so I, I'm not a vet. So if Andrew Grierson, who is H Harness Racing New Zealand's vet expert, says it's cool, I'm cool with that. And if Natalie, who's driven oh God knows how many winners, or any other driver who drives well, drives a horse the way they feel comfortable, I'm relatively cool with that. Unless someone just gets stuck back on the fence and doesn't try. So it's very easy to second guess how people train, what horses people breed to, all that sort of stuff. And when, and people are welcome to their opinions. I, I welcome the feedback from cool. Stuart, but I'm not sure that it's my place to second guess every drive where somebody gets beat. 
But also, I have realised that punters have emotion. And when a horse gets beaten, they back it. They want to vent, and that's their right too. Yep, it absolutely is. And like I say, we do welcome the feedback. What about those just in behind Princess Tiffany last week? Mark, what did you make of Kayla Marie's efforts tonight? I was delighted with her effort, Matt. You know, she's always been just behind the other horse, so second was the best probably. Best what, placing. Yeah. What about the White Locks getting the Cornella as breeders? That must be a big thrill for you as well. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to talk to Braden and Caroline, but I'm sure they'll be over the moon. And yeah, great thrill to run, run the Cornella and the Oaks. Bouncing through with both of the fillies, confident trainer, confident horses into the jewels? Yes, yeah, it's, it looks good going forward anyway, Matt. Another fortnight to go, but they're in a good place. Zachary, re recap of her run. Look, she's gone super. She's come from a long way back again, you know, same as last week, but they probably just got a little bit easier in front, although we did go a uh, record, you know, just sort of felt like we are always keeping up easy enough. You know, she's gone around three wide, sort of got a good track around the bend and felt a smidgen of a chance at the top of the straight, but, you know, halfway down, she just sort of got tired, which is understandable, off a quick half, and like I said, from where she's come from. So, hey, we're wrapped onwards and upwards to the jewels, and if we get a better draw, you know, right back into winning contention again. And here is the market uh, for the Harness Jewel. So she opened 148, got out beyond $2, I think, when Bella Montana beat her last week, and now she's $1.75. And I think we're going into the jewels as a fair fight. They're both close enough to their peak. It might just be percentage points after the draw, Greg. So if the draws become up even, say they draw four and five next to each other, it might just be the one who turns up on the day. And horses are like human beings. Sometimes you get out of bed in the morning and you feel good about life and you want to go attack the world, and other days you get up and you can't be stuffed. And horses are exactly the same. And people who don't, don't believe that Someone like, just said in my ear, every Wednesday, <laughs> well, <laughs> for this show. Well, yeah. It happens all the time, and, 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 and at this level, a percentage point here or there could cost them the race. I, I think it's probably going to come down to draws. I can't see any of the others winning, and that's not insulting Kayla Marie, but I think the other two have genuine X factor, whereas Kayla Marie is a, a very good bridesmaid. But hey, she draws barrier one, maybe that changes. What, what, right. Who are you going for? Princess Tiffany. Okay. Yep. I'm, I'm with you. I think she's got more. Are you going to tell Natalie how to drive it? No, nah, not at all. <laughs> no. Uh, let's move on to another Natalie winning drive. This time it was with uh, one change. This is remarkable how this horse has won four races all by a nose. And at one stage, halfway down, I didn't think it was going to be his day. Here's Mark Mack bringing them home in the Garrard Size Stakes final. One change with a hundred to go, flying even better. One change on the lane, one change is ahead on flying even better. Who's coming again? That is really, really close. One change. Or Natalie Rasmussen returns at the head of affairs here with one change. Well, a nose margin of wins a win though, isn't it? God, that's all he knows, and knows, and knows, and knows now. So, uh, yeah, he's just a great little trier, and he made his own luck tonight and put himself in a good spot. Was that always your plan to press forward? There was a couple of big guns drawn inside you. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, just, you know, I just had to sort of wing it how he felt off the arm, but he sort of felt really with me, and, yeah, so, uh, just, you know, once, once he sort of felt that keen early, it was just sort of, yeah, a matter of just getting across a few. Sometimes these betters improve with racing. Is, has the X factor always been there with him? No, we didn't like him much early, actually. <laughs> um, but he's just one of them professional little race guys, you know. He really does his best when he gets out. He's just a different little horse. He's so professional. Congratulations, Natalie. Thank you. Gee, it was a good home stretch battle between these two. They clearly broke away from Virgil and company. The, the, the real talking point out of the race is Smooth Deal. He underperformed considerably compared to what he had, say, at Young Guns time and beyond that as well. Uh, he's had a blood test come back fine and he's had an ECG come back fine. He will go to the Jules trials on Saturday morning. Look, I don't want to be on him for the jewels. I'm not saying he can't win. I mean, we saw Smolder from the same barn enormously turn a run around from one week to the next to win a jewels. But I can't be on smooth deal. I can't be on anything else in the two-year-old division apart from those two. And one of them stands out as Jules' favourite, and it's not the Jules' favourite. The leader was excellent here. Now, I'm not in any way decrying from what one change did. He's a wonderful little horse, and he just keeps on winning, and that's cool. That's all you, that's all you can do. It doesn't matter if you win by a nose or win by 100 metres, that's all you can do. But he's been beautifully driven a whole bunch of times, and he's obviously got speed, and he's just, he's just a perfect little horse. But the second horse was outstanding, and if he draws the front line, I think most of the others for 150k, Greg, just get out of his way. He runs to the front and he's the horse to beat in the jewels. If, if you want to have one bet in the jewels market, he draws the second line, I don't want to be on him, but 
there's 12 horses in the race. Four draw in the second line. He's 66% to draw the front line, and that makes him 50-50 to lead the race. Smooth deal. I, I can't be on. I'm not in any way decrying his talent. He's clearly a very good horse, but he was just poor here for a horse of his standard. And from the barrier draw, the other two clearly had more speed for him. And given that he's galloped a couple of times, Max wants to look after him early. I get all of that. But the speed shown here, firstly by one change and then by flying even better, I'm with you. The confidence levels in their camp have gone up enormously and his performance on the night was as good as the winners. There was nothing between them. And the time, Michael, a 1.53.4 mile rate. That's, that's free for all class. Well, well, that's why they are enormously in front of the other ones. And you can't make a case that you can back the other ones because they're nine lengths away. Maybe they'll change, but you can't make a case for that. Uh, with Smooth Deal, too, is what he's lost with his two recent defeats is he's lost the respect to earn the front. If you're the best horse in a grade or the toughest horse in the grade, then for this sort of money, a lot of people at Group 1 level, Greg, are willing to get out of your way and cop a sit on you. We see that at the jewels all the time. And they're willing to do that. And don't forget, this is 1980. It's not a mile around the Cambridge where people get up against the mark of and they go, oh, well, I'll stay. Michael, after watching it for the last couple of weeks, what do you make of that? I actually think the races have been more exciting. Now, I'm not decrying from the other two venues, but it gives you an opportunity to move in some races. And if they go very hard early, you get a chance to come from back in the field. That hasn't really happened too often at the other two venues. The you don't care? The punters who watch this show... And Jules Day gets a lot of gallops punters. Don't care. Do you? Couldn't care less. Hmm. OK, it's, I'm pleased I asked You that. know what? The Miracle Mile was 17.20. Nobody cares. Let's go to the beaten exactly. drivers. Exactly right. No one cared. Drivers, people's talking. Blair flying even better, made his way to the top. Pretty gallant. Yeah, he was, Matt. You know, we um, run along good tempo and, you know, he's just a great trying little horse and, you know, he really dug deep right to the line, but unfortunately came up a no short. Tim Virgil's had plenty of recent racing. What did you make of tonight's effort? Yeah, look, he's had a long season, Matt. But um, you know, credit to the horse again tonight. He's he had a nice run, but you know, he finished it off nicely. You know, so bad he was beaten a wee way, but you know, really good run. Mark Smooth Deal. What did you make of his efforts? No, disappointing. Uh, got got a reasonable enough run, and I, I thought he should have been in three. But uh, no, on the night, his performance was way below his capabilities. Do you feel as though that you can get him back to those capabilities for the jewels? Probably have him checked out, but you know, I, I'd say more than likely he'll be coming out of the jewels. All right. So we've had that update with regards to him and the EGC, uh, ECG rather, and the blood have both come back fine. Just on another two-year-old who started early in the night, Cranbourne. Uh, he had a high white cell count. He's been treated, and he'll go to the jewels trials along with Smooth Deal on Saturday. Yeah, is that market been reopened? Um, because I would have thought the three dollars for flying, even better, who could well lead was great money. You can't possibly take three ninety to Smooth Deal to after the trials. A lot of horses pulled out of this because they've been intimidated by the top end of the. Market and you know, you're seeing horses here who good on them. They're going to be in the shop window for maybe potentially being sold. Um, just going back to the 1980, no one's got a care on race day. Pu public don't care about that stuff. Uh, but we can't keep claiming horses run national records. Having a national record for 1980 metres is like having a New Zealand athletics record for 132 metres. It's an irrelevant distance. So <laughs> it's have, mile rate. It's, it's, have it's, a mile rate below 2,000 if you're that way inclined. I think national records mean a lot less than they used to. I think the mile record matters, and I think the two mile record matters because the New Zealand Cup and the Auckland Cup are both. I don't think anybody particularly cares about most of the records in between, and in fact most people couldn't name them. Mm. Yep, very good point. Don't want to talk about the 17, 20 of them. No, we'll move on from that miracle mile. Well, see, the Taylor mile was 1,700 metres for a long time. Yep, back to a mile, nobody cared. No one cares. No, <laughs> they, they don't. Can we take All a right. break? Cause... Well, yeah, we'll take a break because yeah. we've been waffling for a long time. You can go and grab yourself a cup of tea or something, come back well, and join us for the remainder of the Addicts and Features. You, you can just waffle with someone at home. Do what you want. <laughs>
said Mr. Lee off my team. We're just trying to live the dream. Uh, come get it, where I'm sat. Go get it, where I'm sat. Uh, come get it, where I'm sat. Uh, come get it, where I'm sat. Hit me! We found the party. Welcome back in to your box seat. Michael, we lost one of the stars of the 90s, trotting wise, and Mira and I, she won 19 from 27, and uh, gee, when she got on a roll, she was almost unstoppable. Yeah, that role started in the very first start of her career. She was good enough to win on debut, and I remember thinking then, wow, she just big distance jobs in her first couple of runs. Um, good enough to win them both, Greg, both the big ones, the Row Cup and the Dominion. Here is that Dominion at Addington, and one of those horses from a, a small stable back in the day, the John Bedwell stable, and she actually ended up going to Mark Putin's, I think, for a while. Not not for long, but yeah, she was just a very, very good mare, and she she lived a very long life. We're going to pull who can't see daylight. Pride of Petite. It's Mira and I bust ahead of her. Mira and I is going to win it. She's won it. She's the champion. And Mira and I gets it from Buster Hanover. What about the lineup behind her? Buster Hanover, a Dominion winner, multiple Group 1 winner. Um, Pride, Pride, Pride of Petite. Pride of Petite, who never won a race at, at Addington. Addington. Yep. Um, Wagon Apollo, he went okay. Yeah, it takes a hell of a horse to win both the big ones. And she did that. And yeah, golden trotting time, and again, goes back to a conversation we're not going to spend too much time on, but thank God we have the trotting into Dominion's back, Gregory. They're a very special part of the industry. You've really got up on your oh, pedestal to get still that back, didn't you? one of the stupidest decisions made in all the time I've been in harness oh, racing. Um, you've talked about it a lot, so you've got yeah. it back. Well, well done. Let's move on to uh, Grand Chico. Now, the reason I want to focus on him, Michael, is I believe the three-year-old Emerald is the most open of uh, all of the jewels on the 1st of June. This is him outside Memphis, Tennessee. Got a bit of news on him as well. And he's lived up to what I believed he was always capable of. And, and obviously Nigel McGrath thought the same here. Nice drive too. Like Blair, I think he's a speed horse. And I think Blair moved him at the right time and then was able to sit outside the leader and get him for speed at the top of the straight. He finds himself in a three-year-old division which lacks a star because the best one's not there. And even the second best one, another masterpiece, isn't there. And Jesse Duke's a very good horse, but he's not a scary horse. So I think there's a lot of horses in this grade which, you know, with the right sort of run, Memphis, Tennessee being one of them, if they produce their best form, could probably win. So it's a very unusual three-year-old emerald because Greg, it has tended over the years to be one of the absolute superstar races. And as you said, this year it's a lot more open. Double Rocket showed very good speed off the machine. That'll be a great uh, weapon to use on Jules Day. And Memphis, Tennessee pressed forward. Of course, won the Southern Supremacy for Terry and Glenna Schmiel. Uh, sore feet and shoulder. This is footage of Terry driving him. Um, he'll go straight into the Jules now. So they'll work on those issues there because he did underperform. But Grant Chico, the overall time was 2.25. When you consider the two-year-olds went 2.21, obviously nowhere near as, as quick. But you only have to go fast enough to win, and he improved off that 3 8 performance the week before to, to do that and move mid race. So, um, I think the confidence levels of trainer and driver there have gone up enormously. Uh, he can win clearly, but I'm, I'm only be taking the $3.80 or some ridiculous price that is available for him now. He doesn't have enough gate speed to take that, no. quite simply, because he d he's not a horse who can make his own luck in the first half of the race. Open bunch of horses, as I said. Barrier draws are going to be crucial. Jesse Duke will start favourite regardless, but uh, who the real dangers will be will depend on who draws one to five versus a lot of these horses draw the second line. They're going to be 40 bucks. Yeah. Um, who do you like in that division? Yeah, I, I like him. I liked him more when he got out to $7, but he's very much race pattern dependent, isn't he? And you, you mentioned that with his lack of early speed. So 3 360 the price for him, 185 Jesse Duke. Gee, Heisenberg has the speed, but was just OK, I thought, on Friday night. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee will need to lift considerably off that run and has had a couple of issues, of course. And Pete's big Jim hasn't won a race this season. Did run second in the duels last year, but he'd have to lift quite a bit too, I would Well, and he could be a factor because of his gait speed, so he might be the horse who dictates who can win the race. Really happy to see Dad and Davin. Um, he, he won at big odds the other day for Tim Trathan. They were, they were brave enough, the connections, to take the horse to the North Island and things didn't work out there. And they got him back and they won their way into the duels. And any time somebody doesn't back 
back away from a fight and is willing to go take on the might of what was ultimate sniper at the time in the in the northern derby and then go back that they've had a good crack. luck to them good on yep. you fellas i hope things go well for your jewels day and i don't know one thing about tim trathan and his crew win lose or draw they'll enjoy the they'll day. be having fun yep. mate they will. no bones which about which is which that. is what greg it's what Jules is about for a lot it of people. It should be a celebration. But there's yep. going to be a hundred and something horses there, a hundred and eight I think it'll be by the end of it. Well, most of them aren't going to have a chance of winning, but people are going there to enjoy their day. We're going there with Kratos, we're not going to win. Yeah, but go enjoy your day, and then for Timmy and those boys, and everybody else who's involved who's taking the gamble to go, I hope you have a great time and enjoy the experience. One person that won't be there will be representing New Zealand, of course, at the World Drivers' Championship. His name is Matthew Williamson. He's kindly enough joined us online. Uh, g'day to you, Matty. I'm picking things are pretty exciting right about now as you're about to board a plane and uh, make your way to Sweden. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yes, yeah, so, yeah, things are starting to get real, so no, it's um, very exciting times. Matty, I read an article written by this bloke over here which suggested you tried the colours on the other night. Um, that must have been a pretty cool sort of feeling. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, uh, you know, Dad and Mum and that all had a look and um, they were loving it. So, no, it was uh, awesome. And, yeah, just hopefully I can um, do the colours proud. At this stage, you're getting close to 800 career wins. Many of those are with the Trotters. And I know how excited you are to be going to uh, the Elite Lop and heading to where Trotters take centre stage. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it, um, touch wood, it should work in my favour being all trotters there. So um, hopefully I've got a wee, uh, you know, thing to help me there. So, um, But no, elite lop and stuff like that, I've been told how huge that is. So, um, you know, there's going to be a lot to be learnt um, on and off the track. Matty, have you spoken to anybody who's been there? Because not a lot of New Zealand drivers have been there and competed about what to expect. Or is it a case you just got to rock up there and, and be a horseman? Um, pretty much that. Um, Ants was probably one of the main ones I talked to about it, and he just said pretty much um, stick to what you know and, um, you know, drive very similarly and, um, yeah, just drive to what you think, I suppose. Matt, you're going to probably go to a few farms and stuff. When I went over there one time, we went out and saw Stig Johansson's place. Is this a research trip for you? Is it a chance to get over there and see how they do their trotters and shoe their trotters and feed their trotters and work their trotters because obviously while you drive a lot of paces the family has a lot of involvement with trotters oh yeah definitely um i'll be trying to learn as much as i can while i'm over there um you know about even you know their shoeing and just every, everything that they do differently to um you know improve what they do because obviously they're a wee way ahead of us at the moment so um you know you're mad if you can't um try and take some um, advice off them Matt, you've found yourself in an unusual position here because your now fiance, I believe, um, Charlotte Purvis, can't go with you because uh, your first child is on its way. So I believe Josh Dickey is going as your your plus one. Yeah, he's not quite as good looking either, but um, that, that's um, been the sort of only downside of the trip has, has been that. But um, you know, uh, hopefully, um, you know, baby will stay. Um, where he, is, uh, where he or she is at the moment and um, yeah everything will be alright so yeah just hoping her house stays good while I'm away but um, yeah that's been the only downside of the trip but um, Josh will be as excited about it all as I am. So Matt just talk us through this like we see these great sporting moments where people have success and hug their partner like if you drive a winner will you hug Josh I mean I don't quite work I don't understand how this works Matt. Yeah 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 well um a hug will be as far as it goes, but <laughs> definitely with my end of it anyway. Yeah. Um, how's, how's the uh, baby progress going? Um, how's Charlotte getting on? And, and, and when is the uh, the new Williamson in the world expected to arrive? Well, um, they give me the due date of June 10, and I get back June 3, so I'm hoping no earlier than June 3. Any time after that, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy. So, um, But um, Charlotte's health's been great. Everything's going good, so touch wood, it'll keep going good while I'm not there. Matty, I understand our TAB will be taking uh, coverage and betting on a number of the heats that you're involved in, starting with Friday, I understand. So uh, we'll be able to tune in and, and see how you get on. Uh, on Elite Lock Day itself, I don't think you guys have a drive, but um, it'll clearly still be a, a massive highlight. Oh, yeah, no drives that day, but um, no, just going to be excited to um, take it all in and... Um like I said, just see everything that they do um, so differently and see such good trotters in action. All right, really appreciate you taking time out to talk to us. Uh, we look forward to following your progress and wish you all the best, mate, and congratulations on representing the country. No, good as gold. Thanks very much, guys.
He's got a huge, huge adventure ahead of him oh. and Josh, for that matter. So who's driving Kratos now? What, what happens? No, no, there? Josh is coming oh, back. He'll to, get back to drive at the jewels. Um, right. Maddie's not obviously, and he, he didn't have many big drives. About he, three, I think. He, he could said. have been on ultimate stride, but for, for somebody who loves the Trotters as much as the Williamsons do, and they ran first, second, third, and fourth in the first race at Gore the other day, so the brothers and dad won it. And in ascending order yeah, too, so. an age order, yep. chronological order. Um, Sweden's fantastic if you love trotters. So I, I love them, they're my, my favourites. And, and for someone who understands them like Matt does, to go there and watch how they shoe, they still hot shoe some of the trotters over there. Often they race them and take the shoes off, which is really interesting between races. Um, there's just a whole lot of things they do differently. And look, it's going to be a wonderful experience. So the World Drivers' Champs, you can keep up with it. Um, HRNZ is going to have updates. Um, New Zealand has an outstanding record. It's been run 29 times, six New Zealanders have won and all individual titles, whereas other countries have right? had There's that. 24 heats? Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of heats this time. Oof. So they, they race the Saturday of Elite Lot, which is the Saturday, is a big meeting. And then obviously the big one's on Sunday, but it's, it's a big deal. Um, let's go back to that race at Gore, where the, the, the Williamson family were en masse. <laughs> this is uh, Phil winning on a horse who's a pretty good horse, actually, Liberty Stride, but Maddie's in for a real education here, and, and he'll be able to bring that stuff back and share it with, with Dad and Nathan and Brad, and some things won't matter, but some things will matter, so um, I'm not sure the back end of the family could see the front end of the family. No, no, but a rarity, first of all. Oh, it's an incredible thing. Yep. And as you said, in age reverse order, and Dad got the bragging rights there, so good on you, Philip, uh, just showing that he's still got the ability in the bike do, as do well. We, do you reckon that would have happened before? Because I reckon it might have been close to happening with the name Butt back in the day where maybe four of them. Were, but And maybe the O'Reilly's. I'm pretty sure at one stage, Leo, Jared, Kerry. Patrick, Kerry, and even Dad yeah. still might have been racing. But a first four That's, is a bit yeah, of a stretch. It is. Let's move on to Amazing Dream from Addington Raceway mm. uh, the other night. The, the most staggering thing about this performance of mine Michael was she not only set a new New Zealand record for 1980, yeah, that's all cool. She actually broke the 1950 record uh, held by Ali Mack, and yeah, the most important part of this race was a lap earlier when Natalie was sitting parked, Spellbound came round to have a look, Tiffany Rose was in front, and Natalie took the race by the scruff of the neck and said, Right, I need to dominate from the top end. What are you seeing when you see the three races that have shown you so far tonight? Not Mary and I, but what are you seeing with all three of those races? Uh, in front, all stars. And huge gaps. Huge, Big gaps. huge gaps. So what we're seeing there is horses are getting to the back end of the season and they're going around in the duels or these races because some of them are sales series races, you get money to start. And if you pay a lot of money, you want to start. But a lot of these horses are starting to hit the wall. Now here's the start of the race, and once again we're seeing the done horses having gate speed, which has been a huge weapon for them. Here's Tiffany Rose blasting off the gate. We'll talk I about like her. Yeah, well, she, she just keeps on trying, Greg. She's a huge chance uh, in the jewels to get a place. Natalie just parked outside them and said, I'm going to try and, and dominate and, and control the race. I think she's the second best filly in the country by a fair way, and I think she can beat Sweet on me if, if she draws well. Um, so here's the, the back end where we, we see Spellbound going spellbound around. Spellbound going around. This, this is the crucial. She has a look and goes, uh, yep. no, I'm not putting up with this. I'm going to take over here. Now, just on Spellbound, um, spoke to Robert Dunn at length yesterday. She had a high white blood cell count after the race. And again, late into the season, it's getting colder. A lot of horses are going to pick up bugs. New horses are coming and going from the barn. Uh, they are confident they can get her back to her best for the jewels, but they're not going to race her or trial her in between. Again, do you I, want to be backing no, her on that like performance? like Smooth Deal. You can't be jumping on her as good as she is, e even if she was back to her peak, is she as good as this horse? I I've seen no evidence that's true in the last month, because horses go forward and backwards all the time. You put this horse on the front line and sweet on me on the second line, I want to be on her. And considering she's 50-50 to draw inside sweet on me, if you put the two things together, I think they're further apart in the market than they should be. I'd mark this a dollar sixty, dollar seventy, sweet on me, and have amazing dream three dollars. I think the market's wrong for this race because I think that gap is closed. We'll get to that in a moment. The market that is. Let's hear it from the Beaten Brigade. Firstly, Robert uh, Tiffany Rose. What's the wash up there? Yeah, well, another good run by her again. Really, Matt. She uh, did a bit of work early. Um, 
uh, it really um, sticks your head to hand up because you know Nat drove a great race, left Johnny out three wide, so it was going to be a bit of a speed duel. And she was getting a little bit keen at that stage, but she's better on strongly, and she just won those really honest fillies. Well, but if she got the front in the harness jewels, is she winning home? Yeah, she is. Look, I, I like her in front. She's she's strong in front. She's a really strong filly. Um, you know, like today she got a wee bit keen just because of the stream across the track, so the right thing to do. But, um, you know, Mark's horses are two super fillies, and the other filly, you know, slight, probably slightly better of the two, so it makes it hard. But he hasn't disappointed all season, so she's a great chance. Where are you at with Spellbound post that? Well, it's 40 minutes after race and she's still crooked. So um, we've had the vet to her and uh, we're struggling to get her heart rate down, uh, but we will do. And she'll, we'll have to go um, get, get a blood test done tomorrow morning. Obviously, she's got a bug of some sort and that affected her badly. Johnny said she went around the field and she's gone with him one stride. So um, when she came back, she wasn't distressed, but she wasn't, she wasn't real good. And then... Um, she hasn't recovered yet, so it's obviously something that's really, uh, you know, they got to a little bit, but we'll get that sorted out, and we'll report to the stewards about it, and we should have a spot on two weeks' time. Yeah, OK, and in terms of what you've seen in the past of horses getting crook and, and making the comeback, is it doable within two weeks? Oh, absolutely. With, with modern day, you know, drugs certainly is, and uh, we'll be looking at everything we can to try and get it right, Matt, and, um, you know, health comes first. If we can't, which we won't start, but at this stage, you know, I'm hopeful, and obviously everybody knows that was not her tonight, and... Uh, We've got a lot of work to do, but I think we'll do it. Tim, Gemma, Mac, uh, what did you make of her run? Yeah, look, she's getting somewhere back near her best. Obviously, um, her last two runs have, have been really encouraging, so, you know, full credit to the um, connections there for, for getting her back on track, and you know, obviously what one more hurdle to go now, so, um, you know, really looking forward to it. Obviously, she had a nice run tonight, but, you know, she wasn't too far away. Sheree, what did you make of her efforts tonight? Yeah, I think she went nice enough. I mean, she missed the run up in Auckland and come back down. And um, yeah, for the quality of horses in that race and the time they went, I thought she went nice enough. Now, the connections of Lulu Le Mans will be at the Jules Dinner on the Thursday night. That's filling up really fast as well. Up over 200 people going to it now, Michael. And if you book a table, uh, you have an opportunity to win a $500 betting voucher, or $1050 betting vouchers, as it'll be, uh, on the night. So, so is that where the colours The colours get presented going for... Going to be presented. Yep. So the nine sets for the New Zealand reps, yep. and the half a dozen sets for the Australian reps. And all of those people are there. You and I will be up on stage talking to them, doing a full preview, and we'll have the three Jules commentators who have called the Jules thus far, reminiscing on some of the great moments in the sport. Well, actually, to Tony Lee, Mark McNamara and Aaron White, um, just to warn you in advance, we're going to ask you what's uh, the best horse you've commentated at the Jules. So have yep. to think about it, boys. The other one is just getting back to this market. Do you think Amazing Dreams closed enough? Like, I think the $4 now is outstanding value, and that's by no means, again, potting sweet on me. But if she draws outside Amazing Dream, who did beat her two starts ago, I think this market's way too biased towards one, not biased enough towards five, and I don't want to back anything else in the race. Not saying they can't win, but there's been some pretty big gaps between them and the others recently. I think Tiffany Rose is a great place chance in the race. Yeah, definitely, because of her gate speed. So, so where, where do you herself. see the market sitting? It's $1.40 versus well, I $4. Think, I think it'll be a lot closer, um, and even more so if the right barrier draw falls for Amazing Dream. Can Sweet On Me come from behind Amazing Dream to better? I don't think so. Not on the evidence of that run there, no. Mm. OK. Well, Mathematically, it would take... In that case, you at home can take the $4 because she's a 50-50 chance of ending up in front of the other filly if the draws work that way. Even less of a chance of making the jewels was the horse we're going to focus on next. Get lucky. Went around in the sales final. Here's your little horse, Kratos, coming three wide. Won a polo outside. Uh, get lucky here, but he showed early speed. Cheerful has a gallop in the trail. That's a concern leading into the jewels. But get lucky made a statement here, and even more so when we have a look at his run at Awamaru on Sunday. Get Lucky is holding them at the moment. Kratos half a length away. Get Lucky a neck on Kratos. Get Lucky. Get Lucky has beaten Kratos. Third one, Apollo. Fourth off your... Well, Brad, Get Lucky, he looks as though uh, 12 months has been pretty good to him. Yeah, that's right, Matt. He's obviously uh, learned a lot this season from the green two-year-old that he was uh, when we first brought him up here. So, um, yeah, no, he's getting better all the time. So, uh, yeah, it's great for his connections. He's going to need a little bit of luck to get in the harness jewels though, just uh, counting on a couple of other horses. What about uh, Vintage Cheddar? Gee, this horse has just kept going on the upward slide. That's right, Matt. Uh, a bit of country cup racing early in the season's probably hardened him up a bit to this sort of calibre and uh, he didn't disgrace himself when he came up here last season. He competed well, so he's a horse that's getting better and better. So, um, yeah, no almonds and upwards with him too. 
One of the build-up stories of the Harness Jewels of 2019, Alistair Black, Premier Meetings, Addington Raceway, last couple of weeks, and then what this horse did to get himself in the jewels at Oamaru. We'll come back to that sales race very shortly. Let's have a look at his run on Sunday. I suppose, Michael, the most remarkable thing here was, that's him outside the leader, was the price he paid because he was so good a couple of days earlier. Look, I think some people maybe had doubts over whether he would back up, and he did go back 10 metres in the handicap. Brad drove him beautifully. Um, I said about six months ago, this is a very good three-year-old crop, and it is because this is what a nice three-year-old, who's probably ranked between three and eight, um, does to decent older horses, just smashes them. And this that's happened this crop all the way through. Our horse has done it, Tricky Rick's done it, a lot of muscle would do it if he ever raced them. Um, and obviously, you know, Enhance your calm and Oscar Bonavina. So that I was, we ran second in that race, and he went okay. Kratos, Josh drove him beautifully, but I was thrilled for Alice the Black. I never met him before. Um, was able to meet him after the race and shake hands. These are good stories. These smaller stables. He won the next race with Vintage Cheddar. They're coming to Addington. They're having a crack. It's good for the Southern Pride. It adds another dimension to the jewels. You know what, Greg, I didn't care about running second. I was happy to see some good people win. Well done to you, Alistair, and good luck on Jules Day. And good on you for being smart enough to look at the rankings and go to Omaru, because if he hadn't did, done that, he wouldn't have got in. He would have been in the same position that Oscar Bonavina has found himself. He now finds himself number 14, Oscar, and they declare 12 plus an emergency on Friday. So unless somebody pulls out by Thursday now you've night, spoken to most. I've rung every trainer involved apart from Rick Gray. And uh, with Full Noise, are you Brick Trade with Full Noise? Yeah. yeah, I think he'll go. So he's in the South Island. You presume the South Island, South Island is going to go. Unless something happens uh, unusual between now and Thursday night, I think that this will be a full field. I think they'll all start, or they'll at least go to the draws, in which case Oscar Bonavina won't be in the draw, which means that next week's irrelevant to it because it's not the ballot. There's only one ballot declared. If you're on Oscar Bonavina for the jewels, you're in a world of pain here. Just looking here, there was almost 30,000 between first and second on Friday. If you expect people to believe Michael Guerin didn't care about the 30,000... Honestly? Then... What, at the top of the straight... <laughs> honestly? Honestly, at the, honestly, at the top of the you're, straight... You're the biggest dollar man I know. At the top, top of the straight, I thought Kratos might get the other horse. The other horse was better. Hmm. What, 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 you were happy for Alistair Black, but don't tell me you didn't think... Couldn't, mm. couldn't, couldn't care less. Oh. You know what? Oh, he was beaten by a better horse, Greg. If you're unlucky... Then yeah. you can moan. You're beating Bob at a horse, who cares? Mm. It was fun. It was, Let's it was go fun, to, tickle it was me fun to be there. <laughs> Let's go to Tickle Me Pink. I could, I could have done with the money. She, she, she keeps on winning. <laughs> um, she's coming to the jewels, and so she should. Man, this is the oak. She just trotted around. Hurley was just arrogant here. He just <laughs> moseyed around the field and got the lead and kept on going. So, gee, she's come back in good form. I'm not sure she can beat Enhance Your Calm if they both race to their maximum. And this wasn't a super strong field, but she's just a lovely, lovely well, and the way she beat them in the size, you couldn't say she can't. $3.40 her price uh, now. Get lucky with his early speed. He draws well and truly well, inside. And he's a huge car. factor in the race. And it all cashed out the Australia. And we spoke to Anton Galito on Monday. He's definitely coming. It's quick off the gate too. So there's a lot of gate speed. Kratos is quick off the yeah, gate. Yeah, so, and also, look, and Hard Your Calm's no good thing to stroll to the lead. Because if you're on Get Lucky or Tickle Me Pink, all, all cashed up, you've probably done enough to suggest to yourself, well, if I lead, I'm not just going to hand to the other horse. So that's going to be really interesting. So I think it's one of the better races on the day because there's enough different variables, deep south, north, Australian horse. And, and aren't you calm not being foolproof? Exactly, exactly, there's enough about And also whether, whether Oscar Bonavina makes it to the race, but I, I can't back him at 420 because I, my research shows me this week it's doubtful he'll be there. All right. Good information to have. We're going to take a short break on your box seat, come back with a whole lot more information. Stick with us.
two-year-old Ruby is where we'll get to shortly because the key lead-up race to that was on Friday night as well. I do talk about the Hara de Trotter's sire stakes for the two-year-olds. Coming three wide, she hadn't won before tailored elegance, but she loomed up to crack a hill here and she was the one you wanted to be on. Elegance, Midnight Dash is starting to run on. Taylor Elegance in front of Cracker Hill from Midnight Dash. Taylor Elegance is the leader. Cracker Hill's a neck to the inside from Midnight Dash. And Taylor Elegance won it. Taylor Elegance has beaten home. Cracker Hill, Midnight Dash. Is so Mark Purden have won this twice previously. Enhance your calm and uh, Kylie Ray, significantly both of those went on and won their duel. And this crop's starting to look a bit ragged, isn't it? Like, there's a lot of good two-year-old trotters in here, but some have got the gallops and they get tired and you're getting late in the season. And, and you'll see that here. I mean, from the inside of the second line, Ultimate Stride has a gallop. And look, I'm willing to forgive him, and I still think he can win the duels off the front line, but off the second line, it's, you know, there's enough that can go wrong. And one Magic Kenny, when it loses it, man, it can lose it. It can, but gee, his run after that was phenomenal. You look how far off the start there he is, and where he finishes in relation to the winner, and we'll get to that in a moment. I, I think he can win the duels, oh, one no, Magic no, Kenny. Because if you go on his previous run, when he finished second, like a, well, a couple of starts back behind Muscle Mount, enormous. Yeah, all, enormous. All, Even there, look how far off the leader he is. Well, you talk Muscle Mountain like it was uh, three or four lengths. Did you see his trial the week before? No, he, he had a gallop uh, about the 600 metre mark, and I don't know that he's recovered from that um, as in confidence levels was, because prior to that, he looked basically unstoppable, didn't he? He did, and very professional. The momentum's with the winner. The momentum is with this horse heading forward. And again, the gaps were very big in that race, uh, probably due in some part to the gallopers. I'm not willing to ride off ultimate stride. One Magic Kenny can win, but I think there's a lot of horses here, Greg, who June the 2nd will be looking for we'll the paddock. We'll be very happy to get to the yeah. uh, paddock, but let's uh, hear from the drivers out of that one. Bit of a wee professional, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Yeah, that sums her up perfectly, Matt. Yeah, just strode out of the gate and slotted into a nice spot and uh, got a lovely run, but she was just too good. Has she got the all-round game to go on with it? Oh, definitely, yeah. She's got better with each run and, and you know, she's just, she's just a beautiful little horse. Brad Cracker Hill, what did you make of it? Uh, yeah, great run, Matt. Um, he done a little bit of work early and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hope's Horse had a little bit of a look at him halfway down the back straight as well. So, um, for the little bit of work that he's done, he's gone great to, uh, to you know, run money. Bring a solid form line in. Rick, what did you make of the efforts? Oh, no, he went really good. He, he probably didn't trot quite as good as he did the week before, but he has had three weeks in a row. So, um, yeah, maybe he's just getting to the end of them three weeks. He's got two weeks of the jewels, but, I mean, he's really trotting really well and uh, he's never not far away from them. Ben Muscle Mountain, what did you make of his run? Yeah, uh, it wasn't too bad, Matt. He, he hasn't, didn't really feel the same. Um, you know, last start he was beautiful around at the start. He was beautiful in the warm-up, but today he's just a bit antsy. And uh, in the warm-up he got quite keen at stages and knuckled over a few times. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't a terrible run, but, um, you know, I think we'll probably have to sort a few things out before he races next. So let's have a look at this market. Tailored Elegance now into 250 favourite. Drifting, of course, uh, Muscle Mount. Ultimate stride. Look, I'm prepared to give him a forgive, but it wasn't the ideal dress rehearsal. The one that I do really like is One Magic Kenny. Yes, he'll have to bring his A game, but I think he's as good as the others. Uh, it's one of the few races where the draws probably don't matter to half of them. I mean, the manners are far more important, and One Magic Kenny's one of those. I mean. I don't know, it's, it's a bunch of horses where I don't have a great opinion on them because again, who turns up on the day, who's not feeling their joints, who hasn't got growing pains, who hasn't trained off, who hasn't got their coat turning and turning to a hairy yak as the horse I want to back. So I might just look at them on the day and go, that's the one. I, I can't give you any advice on what that horse is going to be, but I would say Tailored Elegance appears to be heading in the right direction, Greg. And she's very consistent and she'll do things well, she's right. she's in the right barn, she's on a home track, there's lots of... There's nothing you can say which is negative about the entire thing. OK, let's have a look at the four-year-old Ruby market because Sunday Sun's up the top at $2.80. I'm sure Robert Dunn gave you a report on him. Majestic Man, he's been on ice since the Row Cup Carnival. $3, has enormous gate speed. King's Landing out to $4.50 with stable mate Winterfell. And the Aussie, what can you tell me about Majestic Player? 
Good horse, um, keeps improving all the time, as most of Anton Galeno's horses will do, can race on the speed, and look, it, it's in play, but it's a very deep race. Valoria is a good horse, forget the price tags, an open class horse, even down to War Admiral, who's an open class horse in the making. So um, Forget the price tag comes to Addington Raceway in the ninth on, it'll yep. be on Friday night. Yeah, it's, it, Tony's happy with the horse. Look, Winterfell was really good last Friday, and, and seemed to trot a little bit square. He's a horse who I think they've had to do a fair bit of work working out for the season, which is funny because last season he looked almost bulletproof, so I'm not sure what's happened there. Maybe he's just had some growing pains or something. Uh, King's Landing, I believe there's been an update there. Yeah, they have treated him, and um, I understand that he will be a lot better. Uh, what I haven't just got at the moment is who's going to the Jules Trials on yeah, well, Sunday, Saturday. Sunday's son's going. Had a really good talk to Robert Dunn about him last night. And this is interesting. He's in the draw for the jewels and they said we've got to use some gate speed on Saturday at the trials. We've got to run the gate because we've got to get in front of these other horses. Now most of what you see at the trials on Saturday is going to be largely irrelevant to the jewels. Over the long period of time the jewels trials haven't been a good pointer to the jewels. But what will matter is how he runs the gate. If he comes off the gate with that natural speed and lands in front and can do the same thing in the jewels and he's clearly the one to beat because he, we haven't seen that weapon from him before. So. He's the horse whose trial, along with Smooth Deal and the two-year-old, I'm most looking forward to seeing on Saturday as a genuine pointer to what might we happen. We will have those Jules trials, plus a whole lot of other preview analysis with the big fish, Craig Thompson. He'll join us. 8 o'clock next Wednesday, hour and a half preview, so a lot of focus uh, will be Can around. Can we have one of those telestrator things where we get to point at the TV? I think we may even bring him a driving stick or a stick to point to it and he can show us exactly what's going to happen. He could be like a school teacher. We're going to use a stick. A stick. Well, that's technical, isn't it? Mm. Okay, join the show next week. <laughs> we'll have a stick for you. Uh, let's head across the Tasman. A couple of group ones there over the weekend. And the trotting championship. Michael was won by Savannah JJ. There's old Kai Valley Blur getting to the outside of uh, McLovin, but Savannah JJ too good. Look, always had ability, and, and like a lot of these horses, just took a year or two to learn the open class grade. Again, I don't think it's a deep bunch. I've been saying that all season about the Victorians. They've all had their chance from sparkling success last year to Tornado Valley, who was really good. Mick Lovin looked the next star, and now Savannah JJ's having its moment in the sun. Um, good on them. They're, they're good people, and I'm, I'm happy to see them win a big race. But, yeah, I... I I think that the open class trotting ranks is ready for a reboot, and I think we saw that on Road Cup night, and I think that reboot's going to be good for when those four-year-olds come through. In a Dominion trot, you love, but this wasn't the <laughs> Dominion trot. This is uh, heading to the Queen of Pacific. Oh, well, you're looking at me like I'm some sort of strange dude. That was actually Glenn Bourne having a wee swish at you there. Oh. Uh, look how far back uh, our step-up got. She was unlucky to get that far off them, made up a whole lot of ground, but uh, Pistol Abbey got home to the outside, and the little horse that could, head down and going for it. Well, they went really, really hard early, and when they go that hard early, over 2,700 metres, the Australian horses usually get found out because they're not used to running those distances. And this was a, a perfect case of the horse who sat in, did nothing, uh, just got over the top of them. So tell me tales on them. They all burnt up too hard early. And yeah, this and that, that took, took care of them late in the piece, didn't it? That look was at basically her. that. Look at, her. look at the head down. The, the problem they've got is when they go to sell the foals, if they look like her, they're probably worth half as much as what the other foals could have been worth. Just before we get to the week ahead, sweet on me, enhance your calm, American pride, diner, bolt. Uh, Smooth Deal and King's Landing all go to the trial Saturday, so they will be well worth Yeah, Sweet, on, sweet on Me will take a lot of attention too because Amazing Dream's gone forward, so she's another one who might impact the markets. But you know, the, the Jules trials over a long period of time haven't yeah, been a great, been a great guide. Uh, let's spend a night together in Northview Hustler first up in Australia, both of those. A 151.4 for Let's Spend a Night Together in Northview Hustler, winning the flashing red, so it'll be going forward to the Queensland Carnival. What about the week ahead for you domestically? We'll be at the Manawa 2 for the second and the last meeting of the season for them. Seven races, 5, 12, $25,000 fast track insurance pick six Thursday night. Alexandra Park, that's where the pick six will be on Friday. 6.02 the first of nine. Addington Raceway. And the track's been relayed. They did that Monday, Tuesday, so we'll get a chance to uh, talk to John Denton on Friday about that. 4.57, 11 races there, the last race meeting. Trials the next day, obviously, at Addington before the duels. Uh, in Vicargal on Saturday, 10 races there, 11.25, the start time of that one. And Rangiora on Sunday, they have 10 races starting at 11.45. So that's domestically. Just a question for you. 
Addington starts at 4.57. Is that too early? Or are we getting to the stage now? Because the night trots used to be the night trots. They would yep. start at 6 or 6.30, and people would rock along and get dressed up and go to the races, and that was the whole night done. Do you think that with the crossover from the gallops, because the gallops are starting to finish, the trots are coming on board, is this an indication that this is now as much a television sport as it is a staying-at-home sport? Because people aren't going to be at the races by 4.57, most people. Most people, no. So, Agre agreed. I think the window's 5 to 10. That's where I think, yep. basically, it goes. Auckland, that's not an option. That's why you no, invariably start the, after 6 o'clock. Yeah, the traffic's too... I, too I get, I get that, but Addington 5 to 10, I'm comfortable with. OK. It's when it goes later that, you know, it starts creating problems, I think, yeah. because the traffic's not so much an issue. It's just, it's cold, the horse people, a lot of them have got to travel. Take the Williamsons to Omaru, for, for example. Yeah. Um, they become very... It just, it just sounds early, but I, I think it crosses over nicely for gallops people at the And TV. people going to the pubs having a beer after work yep. and that sort of thing, so yep. Yep, I um, don't have a problem with that at all. Uh, Woodlands Runners, we'll put them up. Okay. What was your next point? Just with the jewels. So next week, um, the Woodlands Runners. Uh, we have I'm Oliver keen on one of them. Burlington. Burlington, you like mm -hmm. it. Um, what happens next week? What's the time? So, so to, I'll do this week. Yep. We have withdrawals a Thursday night into Friday morning. Noon, the barrier draws come out. I would presume the bookies would reopen the markets Friday, maybe into Saturday. And then what happens from the social side of things next week in Canterbury? OK, so we've got the Thursday night uh, function at Addington Race where you can still book there as well. So get a hold of uh, Joe McMaster there and that'll be a good night. Friday's the golf day that's been sold out for a couple of weeks and uh, then we'll be into it on, on Saturday. Today. That's okay. pretty much the social week, and of course we have eight o'clock the preview on Wednesday night with yourself, me, and the big fish. Okay, and if you can't get to the golf day, it's booked out, so they yep. can't get in. So yep. if you if you're travelling, um, Rickardens on on th Friday. So for those who are travelling and they go, I can't go to the what golf. What am I going to do? I don't yeah. play golf. Rickardens on the Friday. There's no Calcutta's or anything you know of going on. Not that I know of. Okay, no, good as no. God. And then we rock into the races Saturday. We have a preview from 11 a.m. in the morning, yep. and that is for the first hour. And we're on trackside two, and we're exclusive up until half past one. So we'll have as much information okay. as we possibly can. Okay. When do the Australians arrive? I think they're arriving. Some are arriving this Friday. Others are arriving on Monday. Yeah. Following quite, week. So they'll all be there for that function on the Thursday night, which is magnificent. Um, the majority of them are staying with Mark Jones. So the Shane Tritton couple. Yep. Um, and I think Anton Galinos as well could be okay. wrong there. But uh, I yeah. just wanted you to know at home what was going down, and if you're travelling to the jewels, how it's all going to work. And stuff. all right, you're with on the cards. Yeah, my bit of the week's on the cards. I think it'll head forward. I think it'll lead this week. I think it'll win, and I think it'll go to the jewels and be at least a place chance there. Okay, it's a big pink ribbon function day at uh, Rangiora too. So if you want to go on to their uh, Facebook page, you can find out the details. Uh, they're supporting uh, breast cancer, and the boys get paid. If you want to go to their Facebook page, uh, they're having a big day on Jewels Day, as they have done in the past. Remember the chance after the last race when uh, Dexter won it with Pat's Delight last year. So get online with. Them. They're also having a punters club. It's twenty-five dollars if you want to join into that, and they do outlay a whole lot, a big bit of wedge uh, when they get involved there. Thanks so much for your time, Michael. Looking cool. forward to the preview next Wednesday. Yeah, it's going it's to be a massive week, and uh, good luck to everybody who's got a horse there. Hope things the, the, the next nine days go well for you. Yep, certainly. That's been your box seat. We'll see you in seven days' time. Don't forget, it'll be earlier, eight o'clock.